Hi, my name is Shanice Gilliard. I'm one of the interventional fellows at UCLA. My path to interventional radiology was a little bit circuitous. I first started off thinking I might do inter, um, internal medicine, but then I realized that radiology was the path for me. I did my radiology residency at Emory University Hospital where I was the chief resident for my senior year. And now I'm here and, and so I did the ESIR pathway. There are many pathways to interventional radiology and this is the path that worked for me. So, what do I love about interventional radiology? I love the variety of cases, but I particularly love hepatobiliary interventions and portal hypertension. And we're going to see a case of that later today. My day usually starts around 6.30. I review the cases for the day and then I get started. Um, we run the board as a team at 8 a.m. and then we start our cases for the day. Each fellow here is assigned to a room and um, all the cases that are in that particular room are the fellow's responsibility to keep up with and manage with uh, whichever attending is assigned to that particular case. We're looking at an MRI in this patient in the venous space. And as you can see here, there is a little bit of portal enhancement, but there's not much. Um, so we're wondering if this patient has either some kind of insult to the portal the portal vein, which is resulting in their portal hypertension. Um, and because the patient has refractory bleeding, um, that has failed banding on multiple times, we are going to do a tips on this patient. Uh, finding a portal vein intrahepatic may, find, may prove a little bit challenging. So we're going to be doing this tips under intracardiac echo or ICE. Um, we wear lead because as operators we're exposed to radiation on a regular basis. So to minimize the effects of radiation exposure over time, we feel our more sensitive area, the areas of our body that are most sensitive to the deleterious effects of radiation exposure. And what's cool about IR is you get to pick your own lead and make it cute. Okay. Yep, it's cleaned off. Should be okay. difficult anatomy and the row was challenging so that was what we did in the case and 
we are planning the uh, scent length and we will um, deploy the scent for them. Start by look pretty, but we will look in the form, yep, like that. Okay. Then focus forward, just unsheet. Unsheet, we're at that point. No, hold it. Sheet, okay. unsheet the whole thing. Okay. All the way through, unsheet the whole thing. All the way, all the way through. Yeah. 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 You want our top to be, I think she's all the way. Yeah. 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 Okay, I think this is the right place. Alright? Go for it. Hi, my name is Mona Ranade. I'm an interventional radiologist here at UCLA. Um, I'm here to talk to you guys a little bit about my path into interventional radiology and you know, offer any advice, I guess, for all those that are hoping to go into IR. Um, so let me tell you a little bit about my training. I went to um, the Medical College of Wisconsin for my residency. That's where I did my diagnostic radiology training. And then I did my fellowship at Mount Sinai in New York. Um, after finishing my fellowship, I practiced in New York for about three and a half to four years. And I finally moved to the West Coast um, in 2020, and now I'm at UCLA. So a little bit about the diagnostic program that I was at at Medical College. Um, we were a very busy center, and it was a level one trauma. So basically, it was a volume-based program. We saw a lot, lot of studies over night and we did 24 hour shifts where we would you know do all of the diagnostic imaging for um, basically the entire hospital system um, and I think that it's really important as um, we move to an integrated residency that medical students especially are aware of the fact that it's important to build a solid foundation when it comes to your diagnostic skill set because imaging is what we're using for all of our minimally invasive um, approaches or procedures that we offer to our patients. So you have to be a good imager and a good um, puzzle solver, sort of, uh, to first diagnose the problem and then then come up with a solution. So um, it's important to basically be good at understanding why each image modality would work in specific situations, um, be good at you know, correlating the pathophysiology, so doing your rad path correlation, and then once you diagnose the problem, then sort of expanding that to thinking out of the box and coming out with um, minimally invasive solutions for our patients. Um, so after my residency, um, I ended up in New York City and loved my fellowship. It was a very busy fellowship. We did a lot of uh, portal interventions, a lot of um, oncology, mainly um, Y90 radio embolizations as well as you know chemo embolization and ablation procedures and um, we did a little bit of everything from venous work to arterial work um, to MSK work um, so that made my decision uh, to stay in New York for practice um, fairly easy um, one aspect of interventional radiology that I really, really do like is the team approach to things. Um, not only are you essentially solving problems in an out-of-the-box way, it, it's even more fun when you do it with a team. Um, there, I love the collaboration with you know multidisciplinary teams as well, where you have an opportunity to you know work with urology or GI or vascular surgery and the program that I trained at definitely did foster those relationships. Um, here at UCLA, we have a really good relationship with electrophysiology. We do a lot of uh, 
pacemaker lead extraction cases or um, basically venograms, venoplasty procedures for electrophysiology colleagues. We do a lot of uh, right atrial thrombectomies and other such procedures um, with our cardiology colleagues. We have a really great relationship with the pulmonologist where we are taking care of patients with pulmonary embolism and deep venous thrombosis. Um, some of my colleagues have taken it upon themselves to kind of lead the biliary interventions um, basically in, in, in interventional radiology at UCLA and also across the nation um, so that, you know, we're doing a lot of workshops for uh, teaching other colleagues as well as students on how basically we can solve some of the GI issues involving biliary structures and our stones um, with our uh, minimally invasive approaches. Um, so from a standpoint of where we're going in IR, I think it's important for us to kind of have ownership of our patients. We're no longer just consultants that come in, do the procedure and leave. We like to see our patients preoperatively and postoperatively because we are doing, you know, they're minimally invasive, but they are um, procedures that impact our patients. And I think for everyone to have a fair understanding of uh, what to expect from the procedure and our kind of have a good understanding of risk benefit profile, it's important for us to see our patients in clinic. Um, I have been fortunate that clinic, the concept of clinic was emphasized to me starting in um, residency. We had a very busy clinic and we saw our patients um, basically on an outpatient basis in clinic and that continued in New York and it continues at UCLA. We are um, have a busy system. We have a lot of practicing IRs. Um, we are fortunate to also have a full uh, team of NPs that help us uh, see our uh, clinic patients um, along with rotating trainees. And so everyone kind of gets to look at the patient's uh, fire information and electronic medical records, kind of look at imaging, put together that information with the clinical exam um, basically a good physical and whatever diagnostic tests that we might order um, in order to appropriately plan the procedure, kind of go over the risk benefits of the procedure, um, do a full informed consent. And I think that gives uh, the patients a peace of mind as well as allows us to come up with an appropriate plan as far as, you know, is the patient going to be done with what level of sedation or are they going to stay overnight in the hospital and kind of address all of their concerns uh, post-procedure. So um, there are definitely still some patients that need to be seen in the hospital system and, you know, where we do more of a consultant sort of a role and those are mostly our trauma cases um, and our transplant cases that are patients that are already in the hospital. However, we see a lot of patients that are uh, coming to us, finding us on social media, especially for things like prostate, um, benign prostatic hyperplasia where they want prostate artery embolization or um, women with fibroids um, that are seeking minimally invasive options to a hysterectomy, for example, for the for their fibroids. So we see a lot of patients that kind of just find us through um, Facebook or Google and, you know, come to our clinics and then uh, we're able to basically educate them about their options. And um, I think that that's why clinic is very important um, for you as a clinician to kind of have that um, <clears throat> interaction and build trust with your patients. At the end of the day, um, I review my cases from the day. I'm reviewing all of the images, I'm trying to see if there's anything on any of the imaging that I might not have observed while um, in the rush of the case, and then dictate the cases. I check on the post-op patients, and then I um, get ready for the next day by usually scanning the cases for tomorrow and making sure I have a good plan for each of those patients. Mm -hmm. Oh, we have the four records. Just kidding. We just need to check it out. Yeah.
Yeah, that's all. Thank you. All right. Thank you for joining us. Today. Hope to see you all again.